guys, what's up? It's Adam with Big Daddy Unlimited, here today to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, one of my favorite things. Long rifles, precision guns, uh, everything bolt action. So I've got a couple things laid out on the table. We're gonna go ahead and break it down one by one. I'm gonna show you everything from a out of the box to the match kind of uh, stock precision gun. Then we'll go to a semi-custom rifle and then we'll go to a full-blown custom rig. So stick with us and check it out. All right, so you just went to the shop, you're interested in shooting long range, and you're like, I don't know what to buy. I have no clue. One of the ones I always recommend out of the gate, the Regaras. Um, the new HMR Pro is a fantastic rifle out of the box. Some really good features at a great, great price point. These are available th uh, through us. Uh, we can get them to you in any of the calibers that they offer. Uh, this one's in 6.5, 6.5 super favorite from mine. Uh, I'll kind of go muzzle to butt and we'll give you a rundown of some of the premium features you get with this rifle. So out of the box, you're getting a 24 inch match grade barrel. It is a little bit lighter in profile than what most guys shoot. Um, I generally will shoot like a, an MTU or a straight profile barrel. Uh, this one is a light tactical contour, saves you a little bit of weight. That way you're not pushing around a 20 plus pound gun like I prefer. Uh, so barrel needs is exceptional. Generally, you're gonna get about a half minute with factory 140 Hornady. Uh, all the muzzles are threaded 5 ace by 24, so you can put your favorite suppressor uh, or muzzle brake, such as the Area 419 or any of the other ones out on the market, Surefire, Dead Air, whatever you wanna choose, you can throw it on there. Coming back to the heart of the gun is the action. Uh, the action on these are really good. They're based off a 700 footprint with some improvements. Uh, it uses a floating bolt head much like a Savage, really smooth, allows you uh, some flexibility and caliber changes if you do decide to rebarrel this gun. So right now it's in standard 308, 65, six Creedmoor bolt face. Uh, you can change it to a 223, you can change it to uh, a short magnum bolt face, whatever you choose, it gives you a lot of flexibility there. Uh, the bottom of the action is based off a 700 footprint, which is really nice. So finding upgraded and aftermarket chassis are really good. Use the standard 700 optics rail so you could put zero MOA or 20 MOA from any of the various manufacturers out there. Uh, all the Bergeras come standard with a five round AI mag. This one's a Magpul AICS P mag. Really good. Uh, I like the 10 rounders. The five rounders are great, especially if you need to get super low and prone. So that's the magazine you get. Uh, bolt is a straight bolt, super short, 60 degree bolt throw. Has a firing pin indicator on the uh, back end so you know when it's cocked and when it's not. Trigger on this gun is exceptional. It's a trigger tech special, if memory serves me correct. Trigger normally is a $250 trigger. Comes in standard on this gun. The stock is a uh, molded uh, stock with it. Has an adjustable cheek piece as well as a spacer system. What that allows you is to actually fit this gun to you, depending on optic height, Overall length of pull, you can really adjust this to fit you. For a sub $2,000 production gun, it's really hard to beat. Um, other guns to look at would be the Tikas, uh, their TAC A1 or the, uh, uh, the T1Xs. Those are exceptional as well. So for production guns, these are really, really good and I suggest you take a look at them. Hold on, we're gonna jump over into the next evolution which will be a semi-custom gun. All right, so you may already have a bolt gun but you wanna make it competitive. And there are a couple options out there. Uh, most guys will just take a standard action uh, and drop it into a chassis. Uh, if you're one of the guys like me that shoot a lot and you've already cooked a barrel on a standard gun, having a, a semi-custom gun is a really good option. Uh, shops out there like uh, GCP Rifles here in Florida, GA Precision, um, there's a number of them out, all throughout the country. You can send them your actions have a premium barrel put on it, and then dropped into a chassis. So this is a 700 and 223 that I built. Um, I actually had GCP build. Um, what they did was they took a standard 700 action, trued it, so the face of the receiver, bolt face, the whole nine. They dropped a premium Excalibur barrel on it, and then just put it into an old rock solid chassis that I have. And I was able to breathe new life into a gun that was previously useless. Uh, barrels are expendable. They're like tires on cars. You know, you get a finite amount of life out of them. Once they're gone, you just replace them. So some of the features you'll see on custom gun, on semi-custom guns, uh, upgraded trigger, having the bolt knob uh, done. So the 700 bolt knob is kind of small. The Badger ones are a little bit bigger, uh, a little bit easier to grab and manipulate. 
larger recoil lug here in the front. Uh, again, another Badger part. Um, and then, like I said, the barrel. Other than that, there's not many differences. You'll see uh, an exponential increase in accuracy jumping from a production gun to a semi-custom gun. You don't get many of the features that you would on a full-blown custom rig, but you're able to make it more cost-effective to stay in the game. So, like I said, if you got an old gun and you want to breathe a little bit extra life into it, go on Sniper's Hide or any of the other good resources for a precision rifle. Look for gunsmiths that are reputable. Um, not somebody working in his basement, you know. Look for guys that have a history, um, either through wins, uh, customer reviews, whatever you can find. Give them a call, talk to them about your options. You can always source the parts from us. Uh, we stock a lot of proof barrels, uh, loophole uh, optics as well. Uh, you'll see on my next one, uh, we're a full MDT dealer as well. Um, trigger Tech Triggers, we're gonna have a video coming out on that, which is pretty cool. Uh, we stock all Trigger Tech Triggers. So yeah, you always have options. Explore them, ask people, talk to them. You can always call me, I'll give you some ideas if you're looking for it. But yeah, semi-custom, great way to breathe life into an old work, uh, workhorse and have a lot of fun with it. So stay tuned and we'll look at a full blown custom rig. All right, so the coup de gras, full custom gun. Uh, if you're like me and you're like, you know what? I love this sport. I really wanna invest my time, my energy and my finance into performing at the best level that I possibly can. Full blown custom guns are the way to go. Um, the main difference between a semi custom and a full custom gun really comes down to the action. Uh, whether it be this ultimatum deadline, a Surgeon 591, a Defiance uh, Tenacity, or a Deviant that they offer, you're gonna get a little bit higher QC, you're gonna get some better fit and finish, especially when it comes to the bolt. Um, you're gonna get different magwell options, you're also gonna get the, the ability to do switch barrels at home. Um, with the Defiance, the Surgeon, and this Ultimatum, they have built-in recoil lugs. So on the previous gun, it's its own separate piece. Once you unscrew the barrel, it kind of floats free. It uses the tension to smash it all together. This one's actually built into the action. So it's always there. It's always a fixed part. It's never a changing dimension. It's never going to move. So you can call up whether the guy who built your rifle or another manufacturer and say, hey, I have this action they can send you a barrel that's already properly headspaced to that gun because the actions are made so consistent. Um, the reason why I chose this specific one was mainly due to the 60 degree bolt throw. The fact that it's AI or AW cut for magazines so I can run AW dual stack magazines as well as single feed AICS magazines. Uh, depending on the action, you'll have uh, the scope rail will either be integral to it, so it's milled as one piece with the action, or like this one, it's a two piece. Uh, I like it because I can change it between 20 MOA or zero MOA. Uh, other than that, you're still gonna you know, have a custom match grade barrel, uh, Trigger Tech Trigger, Timmy Trigger, uh, the Geisley Two Stage, whatever your flavor is there. Uh, this, of course, is riding in an MDT ACC chassis. Um, kind of my preference, what I really, really like, I like the fact that it's got uh, a modular weight system so I can tune the balance point and the overall weight of the gun. Heavier guns shoot a little bit easier, uh, a little bit less felt recoil, and then just overall perform better. Uh, on the front of the gun, I'm a huge proponent of running suppressors, so uh, I choose to run a 6.5 titanium can. Um, Atlas bipod or a Harris bipod. Most of the custom guns now are gonna have what's called ARCA. Um, ARCA comes out of the photography community. Um, these ARCA is standard on the ACC chassis, but it allows you to have a full range of adjustability uh, with your bipod, whether you wanna run it all the way out front like this one is, or if you're shooting off a small platform and you need to move it back, you can by just simply either throwing a lever, lever or twisting a knob. But it also gives you the ability to run spare bags and accessories such as this Coltac. So you'd adjust your ARCA clamp, lock it on, spin your knob, and then now you have an onboard barricade bag that you don't have to worry about. You don't have to hold another one in your hand. You can mount it directly to the bottom of the gun. It also gives you a flat plane on the bottom of your forehand 
So if you're shooting off weird obstacles, you have, uh, you know, you have complete flat on flat contact. It's not canted. You know, you could just shoot the gun a little bit easier. Uh, optics are going to be, you know, user preference. Obviously, I'm a huge loophole fan, so loophole's the way to go in my book. Uh, we also stock Night Force, which the attacker line, the 7 to 35, the 5 to 25s are excellent. Uh, again, reticles are going to be user preference. Um, you can also look at other manufacturers out there. Um, rings, all that stuff is going to kind of be scalable across the board. So I always say with glass, invest really good out of the gate because this same optic has lived on the previous gun that you just saw and could live on a standard production gun. Uh, invest the most in the glass out of the gate because it's something that's going to stick with you for a long, long, long time. Uh, other than that, like I said, the only real difference between a semi-custom rifle and a full-blown custom is mainly the action. So yeah, that's everything um, with gun-wise. Uh, hang on real tight. I got a little bonus feature. We're going to give you some extras and some, uh, some gear that most people will either need in conjunction with or just, you know, forget sometimes. So hang on and we'll be right back. All right. You stuck with us long enough, so I'll show you the last section and I'll let you get on with it. So some of the other accessories that are really needed, especially when, you know, trying to shoot competitively or just overall have a better time at the range are kind of laid out in front of you. Uh, I'll start over here. Muzzle brakes and suppressors. Um, I am not a fan of, of big recoil. Uh, I don't shoot a lot of Magnum guns. And I definitely don't shoot guns without at least a muzzle brake. Uh, so this is a, a muzzle brake from a company called Area 419. Uh, I also use muzzle brakes from Surefire, Dead Air, uh, and a number of other companies. Uh, the whole point behind these is actual recoil reduction and muzzle rise mitigation. So break your shot, run your bolt. The ability to stay on target is huge. Muzzle brakes give you that ability by diverting the blast and concussion behind the bullet back and away from the shooter so that way the gun is fully planted down during the firing cycle. So muzzle brakes are good. They're super loud, a little bit abusive. Uh, next to it, a really neat suppressor that does kind of both. So this is a Silencer Co. Omega, which again, you can find here in our NFA section. Uh, full 30 cal suppressor, but also has what's called an anchor brake. So this gives you the reduction in overall sound signature, but also gives you that muzzle brake uh, feature that you saw previously to help reduce the overall movement in the gun. Uh, I run this on my T23. I really love it. Um, I've used it on my wife's 6.5. It works exceptionally well. The harder you push the brakes, the better they work. So uh, if you want a nice, nice muzzle device, the Omega is a great choice. So muzzle devices, silencers, that whole shebang. Next one is the thing I always forget coming to the range, magazines. This was just dumped out of my bag just because I always forget them. So I try to stuff as much as I can in that bag. So here I've got a breakdown of three different styles. You've got your AI mags, which are single feed. Uh, they are for 762 by 51, 308, 260, 65, 6 Creed, uh, any of those standard big frame calibers. You can get them in five round, 10 round, or what you normally get. Uh, Magpul, their magazines are excellent. This is a five rounder. I also have a 10 rounder from them. Uh, MDT, again, we're a dealer for them, also makes polymer and steel uh, AICS pattern magazines. So there's that one. Uh, for the custom gun, this is an AW mag. Only difference is it's a dual column, so it feeds off the, uh, the side, not off the center. A little more specialized, uh, a little bit harder to get, but I need this for that one gun. Uh, and then the last one is a 6.5 Grendel uh, AR mag. Uh, I have a Grendel gun that I shoot a lot that I really like. Uh, there are some bolt guns that will use AR pattern magazines, so it can't ever hurt to have a spare 20 round 5.56 mag, or in this case, a 15 round Grendel mag. So magazines got you covered. Without those, you can't shoot. You do this whole like single feed thing, it becomes a nightmare. So just throw a couple extra in your bag. If you forget them, you know, grab them out of your, your office or wherever you keep all your shooting stuff, you always got backups. So there's that. Next one, and this is a huge piece of that puzzle, is bipods. I kind of have an uh, assortment of them here. These are all ones that I use regularly. This is a new Atlas Cow. Uh, we are uh, we're bringing the, you know, more of the, the Atlas bipods in from B&T. Uh, they're PSR as well as their standard uh, Atlas with the spinning legs. Uh, they're great. 
They offer you a lot of flexibility, so when you actually load into the bipod, they have a little bit of give. Um, they can't and pan as well. They're a great feature. Uh, all these, like I said, are mount, you know, set up for running Arca because that's my chosen platform. I don't use the stud and I don't use Picatinny on my precision guns. It's just a choice I made. Not necessarily a great choice, not necessarily a bad choice. Just the thing I found to simplify it for me. Um, you can also get uh, adapters to run M-Lock and the Picatinny as well as Keymod. So those are all options as well. Um, other than an Atlas, I always recommend Harris. Uh, the BRMS is a great bipod, um, super effective, uh, really great price point. They offer you the ability if you want to kind of trick them out, you can by adding aftermarket parts. Uh, this is a standard one with the ARCA mount and it has a KMW pod lock, which is available again through us on the website. Uh, the one in front is when I'm shooting in like uh, grass, gravel, anything that's that hard concrete. Uh, this one I added a set of spike feet to. So, but again, still just standard Harris BRMS. Uh, this one has uh, a cant feature as well as notch legs, which is huge. Once you get them into the notch, they lock, they won't collapse on you, and they're spring loaded. So, bipods, you need it to support the front of the gun. Uh, you don't have one, you're gonna have a bad time. So, there's that. Uh, we'll move over into ammo, ammo carriers. Um, with these guns, you're generally running some kind of match grade ammunition whether it be from Federal, Hornaday, or any of the other great manufacturers, having a way to carry them securely and safely is important. Most people leave them in the box. I find you know, having five 20 round boxes just a little cumbersome when I can consolidate them down into a much more effective packing system. Uh, the one on the front is a Coltac ammo novel. Uh, we carry them here, available in an assortment of colors. If we don't have it, let me know. We can custom order it for you. Uh, the back two are MTM polymer cases. These are for 223. The back one, a little bit bigger. This one uh, for the 308 case or 65 Creedmoor. Each of these will hold a hunter. So instead of carrying five 20 round boxes, I can keep it nice and small. Super efficient, super clean. And the nice thing is it keeps the ammo safe. It's not rolling around. Uh, if you're like me and you reload, you can actually remember and divide things up. So like, I know the first two uh, rows in this are for load development coming up. The rest of it is just blasting practice ammo. That's kind of a, a known good one. Um, so yeah, always recommend them. They're relatively cheap. I wanna say they're less than 20 bucks, but you know, do your own research, you can find them. So that's ammo, uh, ammo carriers. Um, talk on ammo for a second. Uh, you're gonna get what you pay for. Uh, you buy cheap ammo, you're going to get cheap results. Uh, match ammo now is better than it's ever been, and it's super affordable. Uh, you can get Hornady stuff for about a buck a round, maybe a little bit less depending on when you get it. Uh, the same with Federal Gold Medal Match. So if you want good results, buy good ammo. That's the best thing I could tell you. And then the last thing is, uh, is bags, support bags, rear bags, barricade bags, all that stuff. Um, the one thing I can always tell people, always keep at least one rear bag with you. Uh, the, you know, you can kind of ghetto it and put your hand underneath the rear of the stock, but the problem is you have pulse, it's gonna feed itself into the gun, gun's gonna have movement. Bags allow you to isolate it. Uh, they also give you the ability to raise and lower by simply squeezing the bag. So if you squeeze it, uh, it'll lower the gun, it'll drop the, uh, the muzzle down. If you let it flatten out, it'll raise the muzzle up. So always try to have a few of these uh, again, these are all Coltax, just what I run. Uh, Dustin's great people, we like their products and we'll have a separate video on just their stuff coming up. So rear bag, uh, you can then, if you wanna get into the PRS game stuff, if you're like, hey, I shot at the range, I really enjoy this, I wanna get competitive with it. Uh, two things I'd recommend are always uh, some kind of barricade bag. This is a trap bag, so if you come up to a barricade, drop it on, it gives you a flat surface to support your gun. Uh, trap bag's really nice. Then you also have uh, their normal brick bag. A little bit smaller footprint, um, but just an easier one. This also can double as a rear bag if you ever needed it. So yeah, that's your accessories. I know you've been here. I appreciate it. I know you, you've been here a while and I appreciate you sticking out uh, a long time. So if you got any questions, don't hesitate to give me a shout uh, through email, through Facebook, whatever you want to do. And make sure you take the time and uh, check us out at Big Daddy Unlimited.